Man, I think every man has got to go through some sort of initiation. And the reason is because life is harsh. Like, life is life is a harsh motherfucker, you know? You kind of want to, you want the initiation because you need to realize that life is hard, it's cold, people die, people suffer, you're going to suffer, no one gives a shit about you. And you want the initiation to make you stoic. You want to, you want the suffering, you want to be, you want to have to deal with suffering and see the harshness, the reality of what this thing is, and let that naturally make you stoic instead of reading about stoicism and trying to be stoic. Because the answer to the, the stoicness that you'll naturally have to adapt, that will help you adapt to this coldness and the harsh reality, is thumos. That is the response to life. Because the only way that you know, you're, we're going to be able to, to combat it is to face it with head, head, like face it head on with spiritedness. And so you do, I really think you want an initiation as a man. You, you really, you need it. You need an initiation. So you see this, uh, you know, you see a smile sometimes on young guy's face. Which is like a nervous smile. It, a smile to disarm, to show the world, hey, I'm a, I'm a nice guy, I'm harmless. <clears throat> and there's nothing wrong with smiling. I smile all the time. Seriously, if you saw me out throughout the day, I go to jiu-jitsu, I'm always smiling. It, for me, it's part of gratitude. But at a point in my life, it was because of, I was scared of people. I wasn't I wasn't moving on to the next level. It was it was a people. My life was filled with people worrying about how they thought about me. And so what I'm beginning to or what I've thought about and what I've been thinking about is the initiation that you face needs to be one where you get over. You get over the concern of people and others and their opinions. You're not going to war against people. People are not your enemy. You want to get to a point where you're going to war. And when I say war, I could say you're putting your energy and all your forces, that army of energy, you're directing that into war against the world, the war of creativity, a war of creation and art. Now, let me break this down for you. I mean, I'm not sure the exact origin story of, you know, the Batman and Joker, but I know that Batman loses his parents, all right? That's a clear initiation. He, he becomes the Batman after he loses his parents. They die. He seeks out vengeance. He becomes, it separates him from that boy state. His childhood ways are left behind. He moves into becoming the Batman. But the Joker is very similar in a way. You know, I'm, I believe he also lost his parents. And he goes out in the world and he struggles to make money. And he struggles to find his voice. You know, I don't know if this, the last Joker movie is canon. But he struggles with his comedy. People aren't laughing. And he eventually gets to a point where he's on the brink of snapping. And he eventually does. But... He goes to war with people. It's the people that constantly are giving him shit and not paying attention to him. And it's the people that are infecting his mind. They've made a space in his mind. They've taken a rent within his mind. And it's the people that he goes to war with. And so you want to get to a place where you're no longer at war with other people. There's a quote that says, small minds talk about people. Average minds, I think, talk about people. Great minds talk about ideas. There's one in the middle there that, you know, it's 
small people talk about others. Average people talk about events. And great people talk about ideas. And so you want to get to a place where you're not focused on people. On getting in arguments with other people. You want to be at a place in your life where you're not really affected by the actions of other people. And you may think, how, how, you know, I live at home, I'm with family, there's friends, they do me wrong, people are stealing from me, people are trying to take from me, this guy's messing up. Listen, the world wants you to focus on other people. And it's everywhere, it's in the dramas, it's on the TV, there's always, it's always focus on people, but if you really want to level up in your life, you have to, you have to. You cannot keep worrying about other people. You cannot be in war and always preoccupied on the events of other people. You have to have more ideas. And you have to have creativity come into your life. So that way, when you realize life is harsh, you're not staying on this base level, this bottom of the tree, right? That low-hanging fruit is other people and getting involved and getting in drama. So once you see above that, you know, it's, it's no longer about people, but it's, it's, uh, you're occupied with ideas, man. And the ideas consume you. And you see a lot of this with artists, famous artists of the past, people, these, uh, composers, the philosophers, where maybe they philosophize about people, but they philosophize about how to live and how to give your life meaning and topics that are greater than just us monkeys in this cage. Slowly, that nervous smile will start to fade from you when you realize the harshness of life. You accept that this life is hard. And you can either adapt to that and you can choose to complain and to mope and to be miserable or you can accept it. And that's often very difficult pill to swallow. There's acceptance, then there's guilt, then there's anger. You want to spit it up. You want to, you want, you're angry at the world. And a lot of guys in this phase, they're at that phase of anger. And they're at that phase of focus on people and others and people have done them wrong. Maybe they're ashamed of, uh, ashamed of themselves. But you want to get to the next level, which is acceptance and overcoming. Because that's where the thumos is. That's where the spiritedness is. Is when you accept. You can't do anything about it other than accept. You know, it's always funny. People see the gas prices going up. I don't even look. What am I going to do? Stop driving my car? Am I going to, am I going to actually walk to more places? I mean, I've done it. I've walked plenty of places and I could do it again. But the why complain about the gas prices? What are you going to stop driving your car? You can't control it. What are you going to do? And if you're going to do something, then do something about it. But why even mention the gas prices? These gas, I can't, dude, the amount of people that have been talking about gas prices. Dude, I've heard it. I realize the gas prices are high. It's a couple more bucks. What are you going to do? Stop driving? It's the same with life. We're com you complain about this. You get angry, resentful, filled with contempt. What are you going to do about it? Acceptance is the only thing that you can do. Once you accept, you can rise up. And you can begin to strategize. And then the ideas take over. Oh, well, maybe I can get a little moped. Maybe I can get a little scooter. Right? Is it cheaper to take an Uber or a Lyft? Probably not, right? But you start to have ideas when you stop complaining. Acceptance is the key to moving forward. Complaining keeps you in the past and it keeps you stagnant. It's just so easy to be on this surface level, picking the low-hanging fruit of anger and greed and it's other people's fault and you're always thinking about other people. I've met people that always, they're always, there's like, at their core, there's a little bit of anger for other people. Because they're always skeptical and not trusting. 
you know, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt and trust people until like they, they really uh, show me their true face. And then, you know, you want to be in a position where you don't have to have anything to do with them. But you never want to get resentful because, man, people are the ones that are going to change your life. We're not monkeys. We're not like, you don't need to go around and, and you know, just you and your little gang and, and just kill every other monkey that's not in your tribe. And that's what they do, right? And, and they, you need to realize that people are your friends and they are going to help you grow more than anything. I mean, every single opportunity that I've ever had has been because of some relationship with another individual. And a lot of guys are in the, the sphere, you know, the self-improvement, self-development, man, manosphere they're not they're not talking about this it's all about you being the best but you're alone and it's always another individual that is going to give you you know more more juice more insight a different angle but when you're always you know combative going against people trying to be a rebel against everyone you don't you don't see those opportunities and it's going to ruin your life man you know, it, it really will ruin your life. So when you don't have other people and when you're distance it, you know, your distance, we had this recently, COVID, man, everyone's distance, people are eating in a damn bubble. You know, people are going outside eating in a bubble. Um, the mask, you can't see people's face, which doesn't allow you to see people smile, which makes you um, not able to pick up on body language, which also makes you not even want to look people in the eye. Things are closed, right? Now they're open. Pretty much everywhere you can you can do. We're back. We're back. You can do anything. I'm doing jujitsu. I'm going to the gym. But I mean, you saw it very clearly what happens when people get distanced. There's a lot of depression. There's a lot of loneliness out there. Um, and there's a lot of stuck in your head. It's easy to get stuck in your head as a young man. And to have this nervousness that constantly eats away at you inside of your head. This um, this nervousness, you know, like you're constantly ruminating in this self-reflection inside of your own head. When I started jujitsu, it was a big, it was a big um, thing for me. And I say it changed my life. It didn't change all at once, but what it did is like, it showed me a new angle in life and it made me feel more integrated in life. Before jujitsu, it was always me competing against myself. I've told you this. I'm in the weight room. I'm trying to pump myself up, listen to music, you know, lift heavy weights. Come on, man. Yeah, let's go. Let's push it. You don't feel like it. Let's push it. It's always me talking to me. My whole life was like that. You know, my whole life was intro, introspection, thinking inwardly, going within. The energy was constantly, it was like it was constantly circling in my mind. No way out. I remember, I've always kind of been like this when I was younger, it's like I've always think so deep into things for no reason. Things that don't need to be thought about. And I would ruminate. I would uh, I would get, I would overthink about petty things. You know, petty things. And there was almost this weird longing that I was missing out. Like, you could call it FOMO, maybe. There was this longing that other people are living they're living their life and I, I see them and I'm not experiencing that, you know? Like you see a couple and 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 it wasn't ever like like some Elliot Rogers thing, like, oh, how can they experience this love and this happiness and I don't know, because I, I I've had those things, right? I've I've had them, but it was always this longing, like like um like there was this void, you know, and I see people traveling and then you get you start to get curious, oh maybe I need to travel more, or maybe I need to go out and I need to have like way more women in my life and I need to experience all these things and I need to, and people are doing this and they're going down that route and they're having these kind of careers and I'm not saying all at once, but jujitsu, what it did was make me compete against another intelligent individual. It got me close to, an, uh, to someone else, like really close, like, like we're hugging each other, man, in our damn pajamas. You know, if you're in a gi, you're hugging each other. And you're sweating on each other. I mean, one time I sweat 
you know, I'm, I'm trying to pass this guy's guard and a bead of sweat just drops off on my forehead, lands in his forehead. And I, and then one time I saw it go in a guy's mouth. I felt so bad. I mean, when I saw it land on his forehead, I took my gi and I just wiped his forehead. And I said, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. But, you know, that's close. That's real close. That closeness and and the realization that this is a human being that's trying to kill me, essentially. Because when you get choked out, man, you go unconscious. Someone could kill you. That's what's lying at the end of that triangle, of that head and arm, you know, choke, of that, uh, you know, that bow and arrow. My limbs could, my joints are, and bones could be broken at the end of this. And that's the goal of someone else in jiu-jitsu. The only thing that separates you from that consequence is, is the tap. I submit. I submit, man. You know, leave me alone. Back off. <laughs> You're right. That, and that closeness gave me insight into where, I, you know, during those times, the COVID times, you're so far apart, you're stuck in your head, maybe even your whole life in your teens, you didn't have a big family or you were kind of only a child or you were alone. There's been so many times in my life, even though I had a big family, I moved away to a different state, I was just alone, you know? And so there's this rumination that happens. But when I got close, man, it was like, oh, I see, I see. I see that, that genius inside of you. I see that God... I see that bit of God inside of you, that intelligence, that fire in your eyes, where if you go so long without seeing that in other people, you become, you begin to idolize yourself and your looks and, you know, what you can achieve and the clothes that you wear and the things that you can buy and you, you chase this to become a God. And you forget to realize, you know, you see, you, you don't see that other God inside of other people. And to, to go against another intelligent being, to use my own intelligence against them in this game that we've both, we've both taken up and we've tried to learn. That's beautiful, man. There's, there's, that is beautiful. And that, that has fulfilled me in a, in a really, really big way, um, and you know, I'm I'm not even romanticizing it. I think I think that everyone who does jujitsu or any really close martial art, for that matter, there's a respect that you have for the individual. I mean, you see Conor McGregor, you know, the UFC, and he's talking shit. But at the end of the day, man, a lot of these guys they know the cauliflower ear, the bruises, the scars, the bleeding, the broken nose. I mean, that that you know, you got to be in the fire, and that's heavy shit, man. That's that's you know, that's a that is so high up that once you get to a point where you're aggressive with another individual, even if it's a game like this, you just have a shared respect. And the noise that is the world and your own internal thought cage and this thought cage that we have, it all gets toned down. You've heard this in Fight Club, right? Like it all, everything becomes a bit more quiet in that thought cage. The noise is turned down to a minimum. It's no longer just you. There's other people there. Same thing with the High Thumos men's community. You know, I started this thing out and now we have hundreds of people and the ability to see someone on a daily basis, 24 seven, whenever, sometimes people, um, you don't see them for a couple days. Sometimes you see them every day. We've met up in real life. The same thing there to be able to look this guy in the eye that's not just another comment. That's not just a, a random person on the internet with an anime profile picture, but a real human being that is going through this life. And the depth that that has added to my life is just incredible. To be able to talk to guys in the UK and Australia and New Zealand and Africa and South America, all parts of the world, you know, guys in Ireland and Norway, in, in, in Sweden and Switzerland, it's, I mean, it's just amazing. It's absolutely phenomenal to be able to get that angle on life where I wouldn't be able to get that 20 years ago, 30 years. I wouldn't be able to get that unless I traveled. You know, I wouldn't be able to get and, and connect with other guys on this level and to see that intelligence within them. 
And so it's one of the most powerful things, man, because other people will share with you. They will share with you. I think people want to help, but we've been so pulled apart that it's almost hard to. It's very difficult to want to help. It's almost difficult to want to relate. It's so There's such a barrier and an objection in the way to, to help another individual and to, you know, to relate with a man, to sort of um, share some camaraderie. It's very so back to the initiation. All men need an initiation. For me, it was losing my parents, being forced to move out, and being faced, like, I, like being faced with dread and confronting the abyss. Confronting that, you know, people die. Close people that you love die. No one cares about you. When, when you're a nice guy, you know, it's so easy to be a nice guy. When you're so used to everyone, get your parents are your main caretakers. And you, you want to, you know, one of the ways we convince our parents when we're young is just smile at them and be kind and be nice. And pretty please, please let me sleep over. I'll do anything. I'll do anything. And then when our, our parents are no longer in the picture, we move out. The real, real world isn't like that. I mean, kindness goes a long way. Trust me. Likeability goes a long way. But to be harmless in a world that doesn't give a shit, man. I mean, you, you don't want to be harmless. You don't want to be weak. And you need to go through the initiation so that you come against that wave of nihilism even. That you, you come, you know, you surf that wave eventually. But, you know, first you got to head into it and you realize, ah, oh, God, this fucking sucks. This sucks. I got to make money now. I gotta pay rent. I gotta live on my own. I gotta try to. Uh, I gotta talk to women now, and I gotta figure out how to make myself happy. This is all so weird. I gotta go out. Oh fuck! You know, it's like, yeah, it's it's heavy. It's heavy, and you can run, and just like the Joker, you know, you can you can let that war with people eat away at you. That little worm will make itself into your brain. People aren't your enemy. People are not your enemy. When you find yourself getting upset at other people, even criticizing other people, realize you're you're distracting yourself from the bigger picture and from a more fulfilling life. Seriously, you don't want to do that, man. You don't want to think about other... You don't want to get too caught up in the people's psychology and, and always questioning and thinking someone's doing you wrong I'm gonna betray you you need to be aware of it but more than not I'm, I'm fine as you need more often than not you need to realize people have what you want other people have what you want they got the answers they got the support they got the resources some people have the opportunities to provide you with a greater life and these people are usually not on that same wavelength as the majority of the population, which is caught in drama, petty arguments, and bickering. And so you want to get through that. So one of the initiations is to simply move out. And I know we've even discussed this in, in, in the High Thimos Men's Group. Not everyone's ready to move out. Not everyone can move out when they're 18 years old, when they're 19. Some people are living at home, they're 23, 25, some are even 30. Not everyone can do it, I get that. Some people need to support their family, sure, life's not black and white. I do think there's something about throwing yourself to the wolves and scooping yourself up by the bootstraps that instills within a man the spirit necessary to succeed. Because if you just play it safe all the time and you don't have to go headfirst into conflict, and even when you're not prepared, you need to know in the bottom of your balls that you can make it out of that situation. That you can get into a greater uh, circumstance of life, a better area. And you pulled yourself up, you scooped the nuts. But when you're always kind of playing it safe and, and logical analyzing everything you don't take those risks and you don't always develop what's needed
to succeed and and the courage you know courage is the ability to do something in the face of fear if you weren't afraid of anything you know i feel fear man all the time but if i wasn't to feel that fear i wouldn't have courage i would just be uh you know like a wild man i would be um stupid but i feel fear and to go into fearful things even when you're not ready is sometimes the greatest teacher in this life and can teach you immense courage um and, and so it shapes you over time you develop a thick skin right you do develop a thick skin you lose that nervous smile you're not at war with other people you're not at war with the world you know you go to you go to war with ideas and creativity and you you think about higher things and you a meaning and creating that meaning of figuring this shit out you know i'm gonna figure this shit out that's what i'm gonna do no matter how long it takes I'm not going to question everybody. I'm not going to be longing for this and that. And I always think about other people's life. I got my own life here. I'm my own man. My feet are planted on solid ground. I'm going to figure it out. So, you know, move out of your parents' house. Eventually. Choose to. If you're not forced to, choose to. Even when you're not ready. Think about how can you be useful. If you want to be important in this life... You need to be useful to other people. A lot of people, they want to be important. So they take all these nice photos and they put them on Instagram. And they dress really nice. They buy supreme clothing. They put on the nice shoes. You know, spend a couple hundred dollars on an outfit. Buy a really nice car. They're not important though. They just want to seem important. The way that you become important is by being useful to other people. When other people are not suffering as much... When other people are inspired, when you, you know, when you do something for someone else that makes your life amazing and awesome, you become important to that person when you alleviate suffering. Think about the guys, as much as we can hate on, um, you know, alcohol, the people making your Jack Daniels and your whiskey are fulfilling a role that needs to be met or else you wouldn't have whiskey. The person making the shirts... The person, the IT guy that comes in, you know, and handles a problem with the business. The guy that hooks up your internet, they're useful. They're important. And so when you're not useful, it's very hard to be important. And there's this longing because we want to be important to our fellow individuals. And when you're not useful and you feel of no importance, then you just, it's easy to hate on everyone. And it's easy to get really upset. And, and start fights all the time. Because that's what else do you have? You know? At least when you, when you pick fights with people, they, they pick them back or they're going to react to you. But I'm telling you, the greatest thing is to, to, to be useful. Alright? And to, to figure out how to be useful. And to, to go out into the world and embrace it head on. Because you will become more courageous. In the process and you'll not just be this you'll not just be in a sense this person trying to be alpha you're not trying to be important I'm important I'm stoic no you actually will have an it's a spirit that will invigorate your being that's what happens you realize the bleakness you realize that you confronted it You've dealt with it. You've accepted it. You, you've gotten angry, but your anger has dissipated and you've tamed it. You're entered a new phase of acceptance and then spiritedness where you can go out into the world and you can shape it. And you can be a man. Alright? And that's it for today's talk. Thanks for hanging out with me. I enjoyed this. Um, hope you guys did too. Let me know if you have any questions. It's a brand new month. If you're not in the group already, get in the group. You're going to love it. We got a bunch of new challenges. We got the men. We're having a camping trip um, early June in Illinois. So if you want to be a part of that, get in here. We're also doing a meetup in Florida uh, towards the end of July. So this these meetups, again, they're not about me. All right? I'm just a guy talking in front of a camera. These meetups are a time to, to meet up with real men, to share experiences. I like to put on a, uh, a bit of initiation for these groups, you know, sometimes we grapple, 
grappling is going to be it. We got our own fight club. You got to grapple. When you grapple, you're you're humbled, right? Another man trying to choke you out, and if he does, you know, you might think you're the shit. You might get all the attention in the world, and ever, but you know, some guy could have killed you. So, <laughs> too bad. <laughs> but initiation. Think about this in your life. It's not just moving out. There's always times for initiations. There's always time to go through something that causes you to want to become more, to bring forth a new, a new, a new uh, process of growth and stimulation. There's always times for that. Some different seasons. All right, guys, this has been awesome. Hi, Thumos. I wish you the best. Let's have a great week. Talk to you soon. Peace.